We're counting down to the World Cup here on Beyond World of Cricket. And today we'll be looking at the runners-up of the last edition, New Zealand. The Kiwis have been described as the perennial bridesmaids. And there is a feeling that this is the last chance for their quote-unquote golden generation to win a limited overs World Cup title. To set up their campaign, we're joined by 1996 World Cup winner Dav Watmore. Dav, the first thing that comes to your mind when you talk about New Zealand is that heartbreaking <laughs> final defeat uh, four years back. You have to say this is the last chance for the likes of Williamson, yeah. Bolt and Saudi to win that World Cup. Oh, surely, and in my memory goes back to that uh, awful <laughs> uh, few minutes when they lost that uh, super over to be the bridesmaid again. But nevertheless, uh, you know they did they did well to get there, and uh, and I expect them to do well here as also. But yes, you're right. Bolt, Williamson, Southie, you would think would struggle to be there in another four years. So with any player who thinks the you know, dogs won't be around the next time it'll take some a little bit more importance to ensure that they have some really good memories and do well and hopefully see their team carry the cup. Yeah, it's uh, nice you spoke about memories there because they were finalists at the 2015 World yeah. Cup as well and also the 2021 T20 World Cup. So yeah. do you think it's important for their legacy, for the likes of Williamson, Saudi, yeah. Bolt, who've been around for such a long time, that just one more step for them? Do you yeah. think it's a bit too far for them this time around? Well, it probably is, but then we may be seeing it again. You keep knocking on the door yeah. and it'll open, I guess, but, um, you know, I, I do feel for them. I think they're a very good team, well disciplined, but sadly, uh, you know, they go right the way, but that final hurdle, it just hasn't happened for them. Okay, it's important to note that they did win an ICC title, the 2021 uh, World Test Championship, but of course they haven't won in the limited overs format. Uh, let, let's just go through their squad now, uh, Dav. Uh, not many um, have the Kiwis down as uh, contenders this time around, but if you look at their squad, which we will, they have a pretty well-rounded squad with uh, some good balance. Let's go Surely. through the team. Yeah, they, that's a good set of batsmen there. You know, uh, the hard-working boys that they just fly under the radar a little bit, but and, yeah. and opposition teams take them a little lightly. <laughs> and they pay for it. Yeah, well, Williamson, of course, uh, there are some injury concerns surrounding him, but he played today in the warm-up clash. Then Tom Lathan has also been very, very consistent. Devon Conway, he's got plenty of experience uh, in India, and he could really be the X-factor if you look at him. Yeah, surely. Um, he's uh, been a performer. He's uh, no stranger to these um, conditions. And I also think, uh, you know, he'll be a consistent performer for, for New Zealand. And you have the opener, Youngie, uh, Will Young, Daryl Mitchell, who's another good player, um, can do both, bat and ball. Mark Chapman has been in good form recently with a, a lot of runs against Pakistan. And, um, and Glenn Phillips also is pushing hard to Glenn get in Phillips. the 11. Glenn Phillips can really hit the ball out of the bag. Let's take a look at their all-rounders now. That's quite a strong unit of all-rounders you've got there. Jimmy Nisham, Mitchell Sander, Rachin Ravindra, who has been playing well off late. Jimmy Nisham and Mitchell Sander, plenty of experience there yeah, as well. Yeah, surely. And uh, uh, there's another one or two that could, you know, put their pitches in that uh, in that category yeah, also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, they're, they're not, um, you know, they're not without enough of options to ensure that they uh, that they have a very strong team. Yeah. Yeah. Let's take a look at the bowlers now. As you said, uh, you know, Ish Sodhi, you know, he yeah. could he could really uh, be an X factor for them because in well, any wrist tracks, spinner, yeah, yeah. good yeah. wrist spinners will uh, will always trouble. Uh, and then you have Tim Southey, who is a very experienced player, but sadly will miss the start of it. Uh, Bolt Ferguson, uh, I f I figure will be in the eleven, um, and then Matt Henry, who could also be in there. But you know, that's a good. Decent, hard-working group of boys that, you know, always makes it difficult for the opposition. Yeah, that's an interesting choice of word. That's what you would associate with the New Zealand, New Zealand cricket yeah. of, uh, in the last uh, 10 years or so. And of course, yeah. they are led by someone who is regarded as uh, one of the great batters of this generation. Of course, Kane Williamson. Mm. He's 
He's back. He's back playing, but yeah. not uh, competitively. He, um, I'm not quite sure yeah. if he'll play that first. He hasn't played yeah. the full 50 overs yeah, yet, yeah, yeah. but he's batted in the last two and got runs. Yeah. So uh, you never know. He just may be uh, going out to toss the coin on that first game. Yeah, but do you think it's a concern because he hasn't played those 50 overs? You know, he's he'll be pushed into the thick of things and be expected yeah. to uh, perform, perform because he has really held that yeah. New Zealand batting lineup together over the years. He's the real yeah. anchor. So yeah, does that lot. put pressure on him? Yeah, well, p perhaps. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of people asking that same question. And um, fair enough, too. But in my opinion, you know, really good players, they don't take much to get back uh, into form. We've seen evidence of that with Stokes. He hasn't played a, an ODI for a long time and he gets 100. <laughs> Uh, okay, Shreya Saya took a one or two games to hit his straps, but he's back in there. And I don't see too much of a problem with a Kane Williamson. You know, he'll be very much welcome, you know, back in that 11. And they'll all be hoping he'd be fit enough to play the first game. If he doesn't, then he'll definitely, I'm pretty sure, play the second. One thing that stands out about Williamson is that he tends to play the situation a lot like Stokes. You know, he can change <laughs> gears instantly mm. and suddenly you see an absolutely different player to the one that is regarded as being, uh, you know, a safe. So, I mean, yeah. he can really turn it up. Surely, yeah, they are different players, um, but each in their own way are very important to their teams. Effective, both effective. But then, when, uh, but this captain in, in Williamson, is uh, he's been their leader as a batsman and, uh, you know, he'll be really... You know, chafing at the bit to come back and play, and the whole team would love him to come back. That's it. okay. Uh, unfortunately, that's not the only injury concern that New Zealand have. Tim Saudi is also just had gone through a fractured thumb. Yeah. We're unsure when he'll be back, uh, and that puts a lot of pressure on the other Pacers. Mm. So, how do you think they'll react? Yeah, I agree. I think uh, he will be missed. He's got uh, terrific um, experience and variations when uh, when he comes to bowling in different parts of that 50 overs. Um, but I rather feel, coming back from, a, from fractures, that they can be managed pretty well. And uh, OK, he's not playing the first game, but I'm expecting him to come in you know, a lot sooner than what people expect. Um, and I think he'll do all right. But you know, it can be managed. Yeah, that's a good point you make there, Dav, and you speaking about that earlier as well. So you are of the opinion that Williamson and Saudi's injuries have been managed very well and they've sort of eased yeah. back, and that's something that the Kiwi management tend to do. They manage their team very well. Don't, don't well, that's right. What one, one sadly is, uh, is an impact injury, can't, yeah. can't be helped. Uh, the other one is, is a longish term injury that needed uh, surgery, um, and it was strategically place to get that um, surgery so you know gives him every every chance to come back and play in the World Cup which it's looking like it's going to happen. Okay now Saudi's uh, partner in crime for a long time has been uh, Trent Bolt. He's no longer contracted <laughs> with uh, New Zealand. He doesn't have a central contract no. uh, but he always makes the team for these big tournaments. It just tells you the value that he yeah. adds to the side. Surely. Um, you know, he, he's not part of that New Zealand team in bilaterals. Um, but certainly in the big tournaments, uh, he's back. And, uh, you know, he's a genuine, genuine wicket taker. You know, a lot like uh, Stark from Australia and Afridi from Pakistan. All lefties who can bowl a fuller length and make that ball move in the air. And have troubled India off late. And has <laughs> troubled India, yeah. Like, so it's a little bit of a risk and reward, you know. It can be driven. Good players will still get away, uh, get the ball away. But it gives himself every chance to pick up wickets, and that's what you want, um, you know, where, with an opening bowler. You're there to get wickets. Just to go a little off topic here, do you think this will set a template for players in the future? They'll just play these big tournaments and then, you know, bilateral um, series, they'll just sit out and play, prefer to play those T20 franchise leagues? Mm, that's a good question. The temptation is there, isn't yeah, it? And yeah. they all use the, um, the reason of wanting to be with family more. Uh, but they will also put their names down to play in, in these lucrative um, T20 formats. So yeah. um, I, I, it wouldn't surprise me. Um, but whether they are invited to play for their countries in these big tournaments will be up to the, the attitude of certain cricket boards around the world. But in this case, of course, New Zealand has shown a lot of, um, a lot of uh, you know, goodwill to get him back and play. 
Okay. Um, like their neighbors, Australia, New Zealand also have plenty of all-rounders mm. to choose from. Santner, Mitchell, Rachin Ravindra, Nisham. Yeah. You know, that's a good headache to have, Oof. isn't it? Absolutely. And again, we, we have evidence. Again, evidence of, uh, of a team able to bat deep without compromising the skill of the bowling attack. And if you've got two to three good ones, then it's a hell of an advantage. And uh, we've seen this here. I think Jimmy Neesham yeah. is a little underrated too. You know, he's a very good finisher also. He played in that super over in that 2019 he World did. Cup final. Young guy, this young Ravindra also, I think yeah. he's got a wonderful future. Yeah. He may not get in that 11 to start with, but gee, you know, he's showing a lot of promise and uh, I'm sure he'll have a bright future and play a lot of games. Sadnet as well, plenty of experience in India. Yeah, surely. Um, you know, he's, uh, he's one that you look to, you know, to, to calm things down as well in that mi in the middle overs and towards the end when it gets a bit hectic um, and they're very fortunate to have him. You know, as we talk about this New Zealand team, they're not half bad. They can they can spring a surprise. They're, they're a disciplined team to yeah. me, you know. Not huge stars, not huge names, but they do the team things well. They're disciplined in what they're... And I think they're also good at reading different situations and yeah. reacting in the right way. Okay, Dav, time to pick your head again. Yeah, <laughs> let's look at the let's 11. Let's look yeah. at the 11, New Zealand 11 that you've gone for. Yep, yep. I'm going we'll to put just Kane Williamson in there. All right. Yes. Let's have a look. Kane Williamson, of course, he has played those two warm-up matches, um, but has not played a competitive match for a long time. But, as you said, he's Kane Williamson. Mm. There we have it. Yes, Will Young has been uh, the preferred opener, um, and Conway also uh, looks to be the one that will partner yeah. him. Williamson picks himself, obviously. He's a very good player. Um, Daryl Mitchell, again, a lot of experience. He's also can chip in a little bit with the ball. With the ball, yeah. yeah. Latham, the wicket keeper and the vice captain. Yes. Very experienced player. Mark Chapman is a youngster, yeah, yeah. but he's got also good potential and showing signs of being a good finisher. You know, he's very active also, good between wickets. Jimmy Neesham, we know. You know, he can uh, give you both bat and ball and, and hit the ball a long way too when he's uh, set. Saudi. You know, he can handle a bat as well, but wonderful, gets good bounce with his leg spin. Has done well in India as well. Has done well in India, has a history of, uh, of performances. Mitchell Santner, we spoke about a little earlier. Uh, experienced left arm spinner. And you got the two quicks. Team Saudi is not there, of course. We hopefully, yeah. we'll see him uh, play some part in the tournament. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, time to put you on the spot again. Okay. <laughs> Where do you think oh, right. this New Zealand will yeah, finish? Yeah. Do you think they'll yeah. make the semi-finals? Um, I think so, you know, but for those reasons that I mentioned, um, that they are uh, a team that often is taken lightly. Uh, they're a team that um, are well drilled and disciplined. They've got good depth um, and they've got good skill. Uh, again, with teams that are not in the subcontinent area would need to show me and show everyone else that they're able to cope with the conditions. So they will change a little bit and I'm expecting also a little bit of dew later in the tournament. And so that'll that play, yeah, that'll play a part also. So, um, but certainly they've been um, figuring in finals in the yeah. last two editions yeah. and there's no reason to think that uh, they won't continue. Yeah, and you know, in a high pressure game, you don't really want to face the likes of Williamson, Southie and Bowler, yeah. do you? No, I don't. No, no. I'm <laughs> not sure they'll lift the cup, but I think they'll shape it. Okay, uh, well, that was uh, New Zealand's preview. Uh, they seem to be everyone's uh, second favourite team, uh, the nice guys, as they are described. And uh, this is the last dance for their golden generation. So hopefully, they produce some high-quality cricket uh, that's it on this episode. Uh, keep watching We On World of Cricket.